With another setback for the company's now infamous 737 MAX jet, newly released documents showing Boeing employees expressing doubts about the plane's ability to fly. Claire Sebastian is joining us live now. So Claire, what are we learning from these documents about how well, or rather, how poorly pilots believed that they were trained uh, to transition to the 737 MAX? Well, Zane, we're learning there were doubts and concerns within the company. We're also seeing uh, that there was a concerted effort from Boeing and, and Boeing employees to try to avoid having regulators mandate simulated training uh, for 737 MAX pilots who were already qualified on the older version of the 737. Now, this is a crucial element for Boeing when it came to selling and marketing this plane to airlines. They wanted to compete head-to-head -head with the A320neo, the, the Airbus uh, similar type of aircraft, and so they didn't want to have to mandate uh, simulated to training that would incur extra time and costs for the airline so we see this appear in these emails in one case a, a technical pilot says they would go face to face with any regulator who tries to mandate the training but it goes further than that Zane we're seeing concerns about the manual provided to pilots in some cases concerns about the plane itself take a look at uh, this particular email from April 2017 just a month before the first 737 max was delivered and this uh, one of Boeing employee says this airplane is designed by clowns who in turn are supervised by monkeys. There were also concerns not about not just about the plane, but about the simulators themselves designed uh, to, to, to sort of help pilots train. There, in one case in February 2018, just 10 months before the first deadly crash on Lion Air, a Boeing employee says, would you put your family on a max simulator trained aircraft? I wouldn't. Uh, the Boeing employee he's talking to says, no. So this is very concerning, of course, to the flying public. As for Boeing, it has now reversed course on that simulator issue. Just this week, it said it would now recommend simulator training for 737 MAX pilots. And Zane, they put out a statement uh, to go with these documents, which they did release to the media, saying these communications do not reflect the company we are and need to be, and they are completely unacceptable. They continued. That said, we remain confident in the regulatory process for qualifying these simulators. It's not Boeing's confidence they need to worry about, though. It's the confidence of the flying public. And just in terms of how these documents uh, factor into the FAA investigation, Claire? Well, this is uh, an interesting one, Zane, because uh, certainly for the FAA, they have released a statement. They had already seen these documents, don't forget. They said that they have reviewed them and they haven't uh, seen any new safety issues that they weren't already uh, aware of. So certainly it seems that, that everything that arises in these documents, the FAA ha has has gone through and said that it's not it's not new. They've already uh, reviewed all of that. They did call the, the tone and, and content of these emails disappointing. But this, don't forget, is not just a black eye for Boeing. This is a problem for the FAA as well. In as much as it was Boeing's responsibility to make sure uh, the plane was safe and the training was correct, the FAA uh, had a responsibility to certify that as well. And this is something that is crucial to watch going forward as they work to get the 737 MAX back in the sky. The FAA has said it's evaluating its certification processes, but this will add renewed scrutiny to that, Zane.